Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and I think I figured out why Marvel Studios' Fantastic Four First Steps is set in the early 1960s of an alternate universe. It's a mystery that I think many of us simply accepted as a tonal choice by WandaVision director Matt Shackman, a fruit of vibes, you could say, to aim for a live-action version of Pixar's The Incredibles, which Brad Bird famously conceived as an analog to the Fantastic Four, and to really set this First Step story in the era of Neil Armstrong in the NASA space race to evoke films like The Right Stuff, and to embrace the visual themes of Sid Mead's retrofuturist art and an escapist stargazing Tomorrowland conceived by Imagineers. But I submit to you that that's not enough of a reason. To set this Fantastic Four film in another reality was already a big enough choice. Why specifically the year of 1963? Why not pick any year, like the present day, or the future, or an unspecified year, and just make whatever year that is as retrofuturist as you want, with just and esque tech and stylized architecture, and just attribute that to being an alternate history. Why well, I believe the reason they chose the early 60s is because First Steps is really referring to a reset as a true Marvel universe, as I've described it before, a true universe as Kevin Feige and Matt Shackman and even composer Michael Giacchino see it as, and that they really need that true Marvel universe to take its first steps in the early 1960s to best align with Marvel's Silver Age era of comics and to reintroduce several Marvel characters with distinctly different 60s era versions of them to give viewers an acceptable alternative to the MCU that we've been living with. Really, I think it comes down to Marvel Studios getting ahead of its biggest crisis before its future era after Secret Wars, the mutant saga, a dilemma that I'm calling the Magneto problem. In this video, I'm going to break down what that means, and based on this one clue in the very first piece of art that Marvel Studios released for this film, every major Marvel character who probably already exists in the New York York City of the Fantastic Four First Steps film. Now, we have so many cool designs available at nerdriot.shop, including this Doctor Doom New Mask Same Task shirt, and some great designs for Agatha All Along and Venom 3 and Blade, so you can support new rock stars by grabbing one of those over at nerdriot.shop. It's really an awesome option for a holiday gift. Okay, in February 2024, Marvel Studios announced the Fantastic Four cast with a Valentine's Day card, which depicted The Thing reading a magazine cover showing President Lyndon B. Johnson from December 1963. This was the cover LBJ appeared on just weeks after accepting the presidency following JFK's assassination. And notably, it was within days in which Johnson awarded J. Robert Oppenheimer the Fermi Award, which was depicted in the final minutes of Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer. This poster, by the way, also included a logo for Marvel Studios that was done in the exact same design as the Cinerama Dome in Hollywood, which opened in the same year. So clearly, they were saying this is 1963. And we could assume from that that the 60s reality of Fantastic Four first steps, has a Kennedy assassination, had a Manhattan Project, had bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, had a World War II, and yes, had a Cold War era space race that Reed Richards in the storms and Ben Grimm are a part of, which kind of makes us wonder what the what if conditional linchpin factor was in this reality to result in Manhattan having a Baxter building, an Excelsior launch pad in the East River, and a clean energy complex on Governor's Island. But yes, we know the 60s space race is a big part of this universe thematically. Vanessa Kirby and Matt Shackman told Entertainment Weekly after San Diego Comic-Con that in the first few weeks of screen tests, wardrobe tests, and concept footage production, the cast and crew watched the 2019 Apollo 11 documentary by Paul Douglas Miller. And so I really wanted to take all of that great stuff from Apollo 11 and, and just imagine that instead of Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, it was the Storms and Ben Grimm mm -hmm. and Reed Richards heading off into space. And that whole idea of, you know, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, according to Matt Shackman, is part of why the movie is called First Steps. But he wouldn't go into the other reasons why they're calling it First Steps. And yes, we should acknowledge that Marvel Studios has always looked at the Fantastic Four as a distinctly 60s era team, like in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, the movie that I think we are are all going to look back on as the preamble to the multiverse saga and these crises of incursions. 838 Reed Richards and Doctor Strange had this exchange. Hello, Stephen. Fantastic Four. Didn't you guys chart in the 60s? Now, of course, this was really a Fab Four joke about groups like the Beatles and a reference to Stephen Strange's impressive memory skills knowing the history of American pop music, which he demonstrated in the opening act of the 2016 Doctor Strange film. Oh, come on, Billy, you gotta be messing with me. 
<laughs> no, Doctor. Feels so good. Chuck Mangione, 1977. But 838 Reed's reaction here suggested to me that he might see a deeper irony in Strange's joke, that this multiversal Reed might know of another reality where the Fantastic Four were truly 1960s era heroes who charted in the 60s. And it might also be because the team who worked on Multiverse of Madness based 838 Reed's square-shaped teleportation portal on Doctor Doom's iconic time door. Thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. Autumn's here, and if you're feeling stressed by the thought of going back to school or overwhelmed by all the work you have to do before the end of the year, it might be time to talk to a therapist. That's something BetterHelp can help you do. BetterHelp makes starting therapy easier and less intimidating for a lot of people. First, use our link to go to their website, betterhelp.com slash newrockstars. The site will ask you to answer a few questions, so BetterHelp can match you up with one of their over 30,000 therapists who they think can help you out the most. The therapists they pick for you will have tons of experience dealing with whatever you're going through. Every single one of their therapists is licensed, has a master's or doctorate degree, and has spent over three years and 1,000 hours working with people just like you. You'll be matched to a therapist usually within 48 hours, so you can get started fast. We've been promoting BetterHelp for a while now, and we've heard some amazing feedback from you guys. We got permission to share this review from one of our viewers who said, I have had a few therapists over the last couple years. My therapist was the most open and accommodating therapist I've ever had. He listened when I needed to talk and told me some hard truths when I needed to listen. I couldn't recommend him more. Let BetterHelp connect you to a therapist who can support you, all from the comfort of your own home. Visit BetterHelp.com slash New Rockstars or choose New Rockstars during sign up and enjoy a special discount on your first month. I think Marvel Studios selected December 1963 as the date for Fantastic Four first steps in this alternate universe because it perfectly aligns with the most productive period in Marvel's publishing history. Fantastic Four number one published in August 1961 as Marvel's first family of superheroes, leading to a surge of sales for the Marvel brand and really a creative renaissance by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. January 1962, Ant-Man, Hank Pym was introduced in Tales to Astonish number 27. May 1962, Thor is introduced in Journey into Mystery number 83. The same month, May 1962, Incredible Hulk number one releases. July 1962, Doctor Doom is introduced in Fantastic Four number five. August 1962, Spider-Man, Peter Parker is introduced in Amazing Fantasy number 15. The following March 1963, Spider-Man solo series debuts, The Amazing Spider-Man number one, in which Peter meets the Fantastic Four. December 1962, Iron Man, Tony Stark is introduced in Tales of Suspense number 39. July 1963, Doctor Strange is introduced in Strange Tales number 110. And in that same month of July 1963 was Uncanny X-Men number one, which introduced us to the very first lineup of the X-Men, including Professor X, Cyclops Scott Summers, Marvel Girl Jean Grey, Beast Hank McCoy, Angel Warren Worthington III, and Iceman Bobby Drake. Their enemy Magneto is also introduced in this issue. A few months later, in 1964, Uncanny X-Men number four introduced us to Magneto's Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, which includes Toad, Quicksilver, Scarlet Witch, and Mastermind. In the years to come, other important Marvel characters would be introduced alongside the Fantastic Four, or at least in their orbit in that decade. Daredevil was introduced in Daredevil number one in April 1964, with the Fantastic Four and Spider-Man in that issue. Black Panther first appeared in Fantastic Four number 52 in July 1966. Agatha freaking Harkness was introduced to Marvel Comics as the governess to Franklin and Valeria Richards, Reed and Sue's kids, in Fantastic Four number 94 in 1969. So I think the reason Marvel Studios chose the date of December 1963 was so that they could establish this First Steps universe as something just like the Silver Age Marvel Comics, where, along with the Fantastic Four, is going to be alternate reality versions of every Marvel hero who had been established in Marvel Comics by that month of December 1963. So that includes Ant-Man, Hank Pym, Thor, Hulk, Doctor Doom, Spider-Man, Iron Man, Doctor Strange, the OG X-Men, and Magneto. And even if this movie takes place over the course of a few years, we could even establish this reality as having an alternate Black Panther. They are clearly establishing this universe as another place where missing pieces from the MCU could be added and could exist so that when these worlds collide, we have everything we need to merge them to make a perfect Marvel universe that we truly feel comfortable calling 616. Now, I'm not saying that all of these heroes will play in to the plot of Fantastic Four First Steps. That would obviously be a pretty overcrowded film. But I think we're going to get winks and references to these characters existing in the background of this world, of this version of Manhattan. Like we might have even gotten a hint at that at the Fantastic Fan from San Diego Comic-Con singling out, for some reason, New York's Flatiron Building, which might be best known to Marvel fans as a location of the Daily Bugle in two different realities, the Raimi-verse and the Spectacular Spider-Man universe. And establishing a Marvel universe as already being populated with assorted heroes is something Kevin 
Kevin Feige has always wanted to do, all the way back to the original version of Nick Fury's introduction in the 2008 Iron Man post credit scene. As if gamma accidents, radioactive bug bites, and assorted mutants weren't enough. I have to deal with a spoiled brat who doesn't play well with others and wants to keep all his toys to himself. So that brings us to what I'm calling the Magneto problem. Fantastic Four First Steps will take us through the multiverse saga that will culminate with Secret Wars. But after that, Marvel will almost certainly take us into the mutant saga. I think Kevin Feige has even confirmed that in this past summer. A proper mutant saga needs a proper Magneto. The problem with that is, if Marvel Studios sticks to its current timeline in the 616 universe, in the sacred timeline, which it seems to be doing by setting Agatha all along just a couple years ahead in 2026, it's just becoming increasingly impossible to establish Magneto as an active player while maintaining his origin as a Holocaust survivor. Marvel Studios' mutant saga at the current rate would have to be set in like the 2030s, which would make Eric Lencher close to 100 years old. And the dilemma Marvel Studios finds itself in is they cannot retcon Magneto's origin to a different historical tragedy or war crime. It is just the third rail of anything in fiction to try to compare other tragedies to the Holocaust. You can't do it. You cannot erase the Holocaust origin story for a character largely known as a Holocaust survivor. Not only was that a huge focus in the Fox X-Men films, like the opening scene of the first of those films was at Auschwitz. And the recent season of X-Men 97 took great lengths to reestablish Magneto's World War II origin, despite the 90s run of the animated show being forced to downplay it due to kids' animated broadcast standards in the early 90s. So whatever version of Magneto we get in the MCU needs to be a man who reaches adulthood in the 1960s and he therefore needs to come from an alternate reality. And Marvel Studios therefore needs to establish a legitimate alternate Marvel history that feels to fans like another true Marvel universe that would rival the MCU that we've been living with in terms of comic accuracy, in terms of population, and in terms of vibes. And this is their opportunity to have a Marvel universe that feels most like the company's most productive and most important era. And that includes an alternate history maintaining World War II and its aftermath from J. JFK to LBJ, the Cold War, the space race, and those things could only happen because World War II happened. That's how Marvel Studios fixes the Magneto problem, by making their flagship first family take their first steps out of a dark history that gave us Magneto. And if we're wondering what was that what if hypothetical scenario that led to their universe being just different enough that we see in all this artwork for the Fantastic Four First Steps film, maybe that what if was just the existence of mutants in World War II, the existence of people like Magneto and Charles Xavier, just basically this all alternate universe could be, what if superheroes existed on this world like 70 years earlier? What would that world look like? That's what we're seeing in this world. So comment down below with your thoughts on all this. Follow me at EA Voss. Subscribe to all three channels in the New Rockstars Network for breakdowns and news coverage of everything you love. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.